No. The war is over. Sri Lanka is moving forward on new paths. What, what should be really be happening now? I think the people in this country had great expectations after the end of the war. And I think now we have a crisis of expectations. They were expecting a peaceful country. They were expecting a country in which they could express themselves freely, whether they were the media, whether they were just civil society. They were expecting economic progress. Mr. Vikramathna, why do you question economic progress? We've seen a lot being done in terms of uh, facilitating that economic progress. Uh, I think when you talk about economic progress, we have to really talk about how people's lives have actually improved. Certainly, infrastructure has improved, particularly if you talk about roads. There are roads in this country. But very little else has improved. For example, right, if you talk about jobs, if you talk about incomes, one of the biggest problems people face today is not only people who have low incomes, but even in middle class families, the salary that you get in a family right, is insufficient to meet the basic needs in the home. 60 years ago, we were an economy only second to Japan. That has changed today. We are at the bottom of the Asian League today. What happened to us? We lost our way somewhere down the road. And I'm sick and tired of people comparing us with countries in South Asia, like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, and so forth. Because we have been way ahead of them in terms of incomes, in, in, in terms of our, our living styles, we have been way so ahead of them. So who, who should we be comparing? I, I mean, in the interim, we should be comparing ourselves with the richer parts of Asia. But I think we are a small country of 20 million people. We can easily aspire to be among the richest, among the happiest people on the globe. You say that we lost our way somewhere along the line. Do you think it's because we went from being uh, not just a welfare state, but a handout state? I think that you know, having basically subsidies distributed across the board doesn't really help. It, in fact, can be a disincentive. It must be targeted. You know, handouts must be targeted where they should go. But what people are looking for is not handouts. They're looking for opportunity. That is the problem. This government has not been able to create that opportunity. Where are the jobs? Uh, your, your, your comment on the roads, the yes, highways, that yes. reminds me of a recent comment made by a senior public official where he said that in the 1950s when the U.S. started putting up its interstate highways, yes. there were a lot of people who were critical of it. But then until 82, it really didn't reap any benefits. So he was saying you need to have a more long-term approach even to the building of roads. So do you agree with that? Let me get, be absolutely clear. We are not opposed to hard infrastructure. We are not opposed to roads. We need the roads. What we are opposed to is the wastage and the corruption that is going into it. So who are the beneficiaries? The beneficiaries are going to be the lending institutions, in this case mainly uh, overseas institutions and the Chinese government, and it's going to be those who actually hog the contracts because they have the benefit of it. And then it's going to be people like myself, politicians, who are in the decision-making process, who are going to benefit from those contracts. That is the problem with these contracts. That is what we must put an end to. We must put an end to the corruption that's going on.